Hey guys, welcome back to Nifty Invest. In the ever-changing landscape of global politics and finance, it's essential to stay informed and prepared for the shifts that can impact our lives and financial security. Today, we delve into a thought-provoking video by financial expert Lynette Tsang, who offers a unique perspective on the ongoing events involving China, Russia, and the New World Order. She also sheds light on the significance of understanding the intricacies of the banking sector, particularly money market funds. This video serves as a wake-up call, urging us to reassess our financial strategies and priorities. Wanad Zhang begins her discussion by highlighting the geopolitical dynamics at play, particularly the role of China and Russia in shaping the global landscape. She emphasizes that, while the world may be focused on Russia's actions and potential peace talks, the underlying negotiations should revolve around the principles upon which the new world order will be built. This perspective challenges conventional narratives and urges viewers to consider the broader context of global power shifts. Zhang's assertion that our wallets and purses are tools for voting in this complex geopolitical theater underscores the importance of financial preparedness. She emphasizes that in times of crisis, the ability to maintain control over one's wealth is paramount, as wealth transfer mechanisms are often at play. This sets the stage for a deeper exploration of the banking sector and money market funds. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we do here on this channel. Let's get right into the video. China brokering a deal for Russia and Ukraine, but Russia staying. Peace talk should be about the new world order. Any negotiation needs to be based on taking into account Russian interests, Russian concerns. It should be about the principles on which the new world order will be based. Right now, we have a choice and we vote with our wallets and purses. And it is critically important that you take heed because if you don't hold it, you don't own it, this is a wealth transfer mechanism. And if the central banks, if everybody can make things appear like they're calmed down, like from the banking crisis, right? I mean, another bank hasn't blown up in a couple of weeks. Woohoo! It must be re that we have resolved that issue. Just be very clear that there is so much lurking beneath the surface. And in this case, I'm opening with this because a big crisis is what gets people to comply. But if you are ready with food, water, energy, security, barterability, wealth preservation, community, and shelter, you will retain your choices and your freedoms. Moscow has long said it was leading a struggle against the United States dominance on the international stage and argues the Ukraine offensive is part of that fight. We've been talking about the fact that this is a proxy fight between China and the U.S. And it should be obvious that it's heating up. So are you ready for this reset? And it's time to get ready. Don't believe the lies. Now, I want to talk more about really briefly what's happening in the banking sector. Okay, because deposits have declined by the most in nearly a year. So for a minute, we had SBB and the other banks and, and, uh, and Credit Suisse, etc. That made people nervous. But in a couple of weeks, there hasn't been very much and people are flying to safety. Now, they think that the safety is in the fiat money products, right? So money markets, we're going to talk about specifically, and we need to, because people's perception is that they're like a savings account and they're safe, but they're not really safe. So if those deposits are leaving the banks, so we know a lot of it's going to the large banks from the smaller banks, where is that money going? And it's going into money market funds. Biggest cash inflow since early 2020. What else was happening then? Well, you know, they're, they're parked in cash-like vehicles. Are they really cash-like? I don't think so. We're going to talk more about it. But in 2008, we had the prime money market fund that froze. So again, the perception is 
that, hey, this is just like a, an account, a savings account, except, and this is true for a savings account too. Moving on to the banking sector, Zhang points out a concerning trend, a decline in deposits, the largest seen in nearly a year. While recent banking crises have captured headlines, the apparent calm should not deceive us into thinking that the issues have been resolved. Zhang cautions viewers about the lurking dangers beneath the surface. One major shift she highlights is the flow of funds from smaller banks to larger ones, primarily into money market funds. This migration has resulted in the largest cash inflow into these funds since early 2020. However, Zhang challenges the perception that money market funds are as safe as they seem. Zhang delves into the history of money market funds, noting that their safety is not guaranteed. She highlights the 2008 Pron money market fund freeze as evidence of this vulnerability. This leads to a critical question. Are money market funds truly a safe haven for investors, especially given the current lack of liquidity in the treasury markets? She raises concerns about the credibility of these funds as vehicles for wealth preservation. The idea that they are similar to savings accounts is debunked, as liquidity constraints can lead to restrictions on withdrawals. Zhang reveals that reforms have been proposed to address these issues, but they raise new concerns about the accessibility of funds for investors. When liquidity drives up, what do they do? They go, nope, you can't have it. And so they changed the rules back in 2014. And you can see this black line, here's 2011, there's 14 when the morning market reform occurred and there, and this graph goes to 2021. So you can see this is the prime fund that went down. This is the government fund. So people feel more comfortable in government treasury money markets, except aren't we hearing a lot about the lack of liquidity in the treasury markets? So in my opinion, it's going from out of the frying pan into the fire. And I'm going to show you more about what I mean exactly by that. But you got to ask yourself that question. Are money markets as safe as people think? Flight to safety. Oh, oh, let's put it in the, in the Japanese yen or the US dollar. Are they really safe when you see global central banks buying more gold than they have since 1967 when we were transitioning into a new system? They refer back to 1967. They just never take it to that next step, which is that's when the system was converting. And whoever holds on to the gold holds on to their choices and their freedoms. But we need to take a look at this because 2020 was really a big test. And so they've gone back to money market reform yet again, dealing with the fundamental problem. Yeah, <laughs> the fundamental problem. After the events in March of 2020, it became clear to policymakers that the 2014 reform of the money market funds industry had not successfully addressed all associated stability concerns related to surges in withdrawals. Interesting. A fundamental problem behind the instability of some money market funds is the expectation that backstop liquidity support will be provided by the government in the event of financial distress, along with the government's inability, inability to credibly commit to provide such support. So I want to take you back a little bit because what they're saying that the government will scoop in. Now they may deny this, but isn't that what they just did with SVB? I mean, in 2008, they bailed out the banks it, with SVB. So 2023, they bailed out the venture capitalists and the tech companies, those entities that will help them bring the CBDC forth. So while this really goes to their credibility, and since this is a huge con game and it's based upon trust, therefore it's also based upon that credibility, which is declining. And let me tell you, once the public loses that confidence, it's, it's game over, but they already know that. So they're putting things in place to give you no choices. Zhang employs a vivid metaphor, comparing money market funds to the Hotel California, where you can check in but never leave. She underscores the importance of understanding that when you deposit money into these funds, you are effectively loaning money to the financial institutions. 
In times of crisis, the government's ability to provide backstop liquidity support comes into question, potentially leaving depositors at risk. The video delves further into the concept of swing pricing, a mechanism through which fund managers can adjust the net asset value NAV, of funds to account for transaction costs and liquidity demands associated with redemptions. This can result in investors receiving less than they initially invested when they attempt to withdraw funds. Zhang explains that the judgment of fund managers can lead to significant disparities between the perceived value of the fund and the actual amount investors receive. This discrepancy poses a risk that investors need to be aware of, especially as reforms aim to constrain withdrawals. The newly proposed reforms aim to address this problem by constraining withdrawals or penalizing them with swing pricing. So in other words, you're not going to be able to get your money out. This gets more and more interesting as we go along. Requiring money market funds to have contractual commitments in place ex ante for liquidity support from private parties. Who are those private parties? Well, they could be a bank. But how about your deposits? How about that you're the private party? Because when you make that deposit, you're actually loaning them money. Whether you realize it or not, your perception does not matter in a court of law. So all I can say is welcome to the Hotel California. You can get in, but you can never check out. So as we've been talking about bank bail-ins, do not ignore money market funds. Because yes, money market funds will pay you more than what you're getting at the banks, though the banks are gonna have to step up because that is a significant source of funding for them. But essentially you are no safer. Actually, you could even be more at risk in the money market funds. Those are money market mutual funds. But it gets more interesting than that. Let me continue on. Okay, under swing pricing, which is what they were talking about, fund managers adjust the NAV, the net asset value, so what you would get paid, by a swing factor that reflects transaction costs and liquidity demands attributable to redemptions. So if you're the first out, right? Well, you're still going to have to eat this. The swing factor reflects spreads and transaction costs that would be associated with selling a vertical slice of the fund's portfolio. Let me explain that a little bit more. Okay, so the fund, it's a mutual fund, right? So they hold different assets, commercial paper, which could be um, debt on, on other corporations, or venture, or venture capitalists, or private equity, etc. These may, as we go through that, those layers, some of them are highly liquid, like maybe short-term treasuries, but others would be a whole lot less liquid. In fact, might not be liquid at all. So they get to use their judgment on what those costs would be. So you think you've got it at a dollar, but when you go to liquidate, maybe they give you 60 cents and you go, wait a minute. And you watch, they're going to tell you before you make that final choice, this is what we're going to pay you. Do you still want to do it? So remember in their documentations, when they're creating any of this stuff, they want to charge fees high enough for you to go, oh, forget about it. I'll leave it in there. But that is just a ruse. So maybe the time to get it out is now before all of this goes into effect and before the next run happens.